welcome back to the show. Uh, my first guest, Jim Bouton. Over the past few years, Jim Bouton has been a writer, an actor, a sportscaster, and a businessman. He uh, is best known, however, for his escapades in the game of baseball. Many of them were described in his controversial bestseller entitled Ball Four. And the details of his recent comeback are included in an updated version called Ball Five. Please welcome Mr. Jim Bouton. Hello, Jim. Nice to see you, sir. I think you should... Well, that's good. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Ball Four, people describe it maybe as one of the best uh, sports books ever written. I enjoyed it. Uh, for people who may not have read it, briefly explain the premise of this work. Well, it was a diary of a Major League Baseball season in 1969, a diary of an expansion team, the Seattle Pilots. Um, but I guess it was uh, considered controversial because it was the first <clears throat> sports book to tell what it was really like in the lock, locker rooms and the dugouts, what the players actually said on the bus, and, and uh, it used the language of the locker room and told some things that hadn't been told before in a sports book. What was the status <clears throat> of your career at that time? Because uh, most people probably remember you <clears throat> as uh, pitching for the Yankees. Yeah, uh, at that time I was uh, really at, at the end of the line. I had uh, come up with a knuckleball and I was trying to hang on with the Seattle Pilots. I was 30 years old and I was a very marginal player. Yeah. And this was a daily account of your life with the then expansion <coughs> Seattle Pilots? <clears throat> yes. Uh, quoting the players, saying some very funny and outrageous things, the kinds of things ball players say. In the and um, <clears throat> I think we know how this was received. Uh, are you, uh, has this worn off? Do the players now like you any better? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think there will probably be a handful of old timers who will never forgive me mm -hmm. for, for writing the book. Um, but most of the younger players today um, are anxious to meet me, and uh, they, they read Ball Four when they were in high school, you see, yeah. 10 years ago, and they come up to me and say, hey, I you know, wanted to meet the guy that told us what it would be like if we ever got to the major league. So there's always a mixed reaction to me on the team. And but you feel like you violated uh, <clears throat> one basic code of the tribe, huh? Well, they, they say that I did, uh, and I guess you could say... Uh, See, there's a sign in every clubhouse that says, what you say here, what you hear here, when you leave here, let it stay here. It's the same sign they have in the CIA. And <laughs> <laughs> like uh, now, it, it, say a, a superstar of the day, if Mickey Mantle, for example, had written the book, would he have had the same problem? No, no, no. Part of the problem was that I was a marginal guy, and what right did I have to say all these things? Um, if Mickey had written the book, it would have been... Uh, you know, a great book, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, Mickey might have said a few things he shouldn't have said, but by and large, it was a good book. And Who were some of the, uh, how, how many years ago did, was it first published? Oh, it came out in 1970, so it's uh, 12 years old. Who were, who were your favorite characters still from the book? Oh, I think uh, Doug Rader, uh, Joe Schultz, who was the manager of the Seattle Pilots. Kind of an inspirational uh, guy, Joe? Joe was, uh, the, the great thing about great thing about Joe was he was sort of the opposite of Vince Lombardi. He used to feel <laughs> sorry for us when we would lose, you know. <laughs> he'd, uh, he'd call us in for a meeting and tell us that, uh, you know, we just weren't that good and not to worry about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, now, Vince Lombardi was winning as everything, and, and Joe was kind of be nice to win occasionally. That's right, yeah. exactly. And uh, Doug Rader, who I remember as a third baseman for the Astros, right? Yes, he's now a... Uh, manager of the Hawaii Triple-A team mm -hmm. of the uh, San Diego Padres. What kind of things would uh, Doug do? Doug liked to uh, make uh, his teammates throw up. Uh, <laughs> 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 so it's a little known category in baseball lore. Uh -huh. Disgusting, yeah. uh, especially during a ball game. If he could get one of the players to throw up in the dugout, that uh -huh. was a big, uh, uh, get a big kick out of that. I know, I know the kids at home are getting the pencil and paper ready, so... <laughs> What are some of the ways Doug would work this out? Uh, this is some very disgusting things. Well, yeah. take, take a shot at one here. Oh, well, one time I saw him take a, a, a drink out of a garbage can, and all the garbage came falling mm -hmm. all over him and <laughs> down his face. That was pretty disgusting. <laughs> or he would, uh, he's always chewing tobacco, you know, and uh -huh. spitting it all over the place. And uh, one time I saw him spit it up on the ceiling, and then when it oozed, oozed on down, he tried to catch yeah. it in his mouth. Catch it in his mouth, yes. 
certainly poetry, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have to pause here, Jim. We'll be right back. I want to talk about your uh, comeback and also your days with the uh, Mavericks in uh, Spokane or Portland. 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 Okay, we'll be right back. Yeah! Gotten, uh, author, a baseball player. Uh, now, you, you decided to make a comeback. Um, and the resentment that you encountered from writing the book, was that a stumbling block in getting back into organized baseball? Um, a little bit. There weren't too many teams willing to give me a chance. Uh, Bill Veck gave me a shot at uh, <clears throat> the White Sox farm team, and I didn't do too well there. And then Ted Turner gave me a shot at his farm team, and I, I did pretty well and eventually how, got called up. How old were you when you decided to go back into organized baseball? 38. And how long had it been since you played professionally? Um, eight, seven years. A eight years, actually, when I finally made it. It was eight years since uh, I had played in 1970. Now, what was the motivation to do that? Because to me, it sounds, from the outside, like a guy chasing a dream that he's not going to get. Oh, well, it was partly that. <clears throat> Just, um, I guess, basically a midlife crisis. I needed to find myself as a person. I was going through a very difficult time. and. And uh, it was just one of those crazy things, you know. You think, if I just go do this, my mm -hmm. life will somehow get straightened out. <clears throat> On the other hand, there are successful pitchers who are now even older than that, right? Yeah, but you've got to stay with it, uh, yeah. you know, year after year. To, to stay out eight years, the only way it was possible for me to go back was because I threw a trick pitch called a knuckleball. Uh -huh which doesn't require any strength, <laughs> but a great deal of patience. Uh, tell us about your days with the Portland Mavericks. T tell us who they are and, and what the they Portland are. The Portland Mavericks were a team of uh, ne'er-do-wells and uh, renegades who had been released by other organizations for various offenses, and uh, <laughs> uh, they played for this uh, independent team in the Class A Northwest League, and... Uh, they would allow anybody to try out for the team. And so uh, when I had been released by uh, the Knoxville White Sox and the Durango, uh, Mexico, Tarantulas or whatever, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I went to Portland, Oregon. And the Mavs ha would, you know, would, would allow me on the team. Uh -huh. And uh, I played for the Portland Mavericks. And it was a great team because, because it was sort of anything goes. Um, the manager met me at the airport when I first joined the team. He said, we got one rule on the club, and that's no smoking dope on the front of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was fair enough. <laughs> and, uh, we, uh, I had a team, team mascot, I understand. We had, uh, yes, we had all kinds of things. Actually, the team, well, the team wore red uniforms for one thing, which made us look like devils mm -hmm. with black trim. And we wore these red bandanas around our neck. And uh, when the opposing pitcher would get knocked out of the ball game, the entire team would stand up along the first base line and sing uh, two choruses of Happy Trails to mm -hmm. you. <laughs> and uh, when the other team would be having a rally, uh, we would uh, uh, suddenly somebody would accidentally throw a baseball all out of the bullpen. And we had a, a black laboratory retriever puppy trained to chase this baseball and he would bolt onto the field chasing after this ball and then of course the game would stop and then the cops the opposing players and the police would spend a half an hour trying to get pl maverick that was his uh -huh. name after a famous racing dog trying to get him off the field and he he had boundless energy and uh he had great moves uh -huh. herschel walker and they couldn't catch the dog and uh you want me to tell you about his greatest night yeah a, let's hear it yes i have a hunch what it might be so but... here's this Here's this uh, seventh inning, big rally going on. We're getting beat, and we want to end this rally. And so we send PL Maverick out on the field. And this is in front of a crowd of 10,000 people who came there. We used to draw, outdraw a major league team some mm -hmm. nights. So PL is uh, cavorting in the outfield, and they can't get him off. And finally, after about a 20-minute chase, he's, he's, he's exhausted now. He's got to get off the field. <laughs> Performer that he is, after racing around center field for 20 minutes, he made a beeline for home plate. And in the vicinity of home plate, uh, did his job, uh -huh. and uh, the fans gave him a standing yeah. ovation. <laughs> I saw um, I saw Doug Rader do the same thing once. Um, we're going to pause here. I want to take a look at your uh, comeback against uh, the Dodgers down in Atlanta a couple of years back. We'll be right back.
with us, and we're going to take a look at, uh, I guess, your first uh, professional league start after a uh, seven, eight-year layoff, right? First major league game, right. Against? The Dodgers. And uh, Fulton County Stadium in and Atlanta. Fulton County Stadium. And you must have been very excited. I was. My heart was pounding under my uniform shirt. What year is this, Jim? We'll take a look at it now. 1978. 1978. This is in September. Watch the monitors at home, of course. The TV will do. Uh, can you, you can stay right there if you want. I want to ask right. you a couple of questions about the Dodgers' reaction to your uh, comeback there. We're going to pause now for station identification. We'll be back to take a look at the world's cheapest movies. Also, dinosaur expert Jim Jensen will join us and Steam Train Maury right after this. Welcome back to the extravaganza. Jim Bouton is here. We just saw you strike out Davey Lopes. And uh, in your comeback, what was your record? I was one in three, but I pitched three good games. Uh -huh. And uh, what was the reaction to the... Uh... <laughs> I mean, I could have... Uh, I lost two to one. Yeah. They were actually uh, close games, yeah. right? Yeah. So what was the reaction to the guys you were uh, opposing? Um, I was surprised uh, that they were very negative about it. I think they w resented the fact that somebody had been out for mm -hmm. eight years and then came back to play, number one. Number two was the book. But uh, number three was the fact that I was getting them out with junk and garbage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I wasn't supposed to do that. Yeah. You know, you had to throw the ball hard like a man or, you know. Yeah. So, combination of things. Was it tough for you to walk away from it again a, a second time? No, I really, I really got it out of my system the second time. And uh, it was, was easy enough. Now, what we have here, Jim, I guess is the, the result of endless hours in the bullpen thinking up ideas. Tell us what this stuff is. Oh, that's... Um, that's shredded bubble gum in a pouch called Big League Chew, and it was developed out in the bullpen in <laughs> Portland, Oregon. When I was playing ball with these kids, uh, we were chewing tobacco, and the guys were complaining about how disgusting the tobacco was. Uh -huh. And the kid sitting next to me by the name of Rob Nelson said, there ought to be something that looks as good as tobacco but tastes good like <laughs> oh, gum. Well, you found it here, Jim. Boy, <laughs> uh, it would be good with clam sauce, I think, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, now, I got to tell you, if I were a little, little leaguer, I'd buy this stuff by the case. I think you got a hit here. Uh, doing pretty well, I guess? It's, uh, yes, it's yeah. it, uh, doing very well. And, and the name of the new book is called Ball Five? Ball Four plus Ball, ball Five. It's the original ball book five. plus an update at the end. Terrific. I'm very glad you could be here tonight. Thank you, Jim. David. Bowden, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Jim.